Hey everyone, I thought this week we'd turn from Brexit to take a look at the President Trump impeachment story, at least until the new year. On the subject of the new year, though, one of the people I'm hoping to see recognise in that new year's honours list is Jeremy Corbyn for services to the Conservative Party. Anyway, the impeachment story, or saga, or mess, or as it will probably later be known, that time President Trump's opponents alienated enough of the public that they all but guaranteed his election. It's really a bit like if Keir Starmer had spent too much time on Facebook and later tried to win over the rest of the public by claiming that Boris Johnson flying a union flag constituted a hate crime and demanded that he was arrested. How does the American system work, though? Well, under the US system, if the House of Representatives have enough evidence of serious wrongdoing, then they can pass a motion for impeachment to be held in the Senate. Note that these are meant to be serious criminal things. It's only happened a handful of times in a couple hundred years. But of course it's President Trump, so if they could, then his opponents would probably try to impeach him for stealing a pen from the doctor's office or bumping the side of a vending machine to get an extra packet of crisps. It's over two years they've been trying to find some evidence, but the Russia conspiracy certainly didn't work out well for them. So then they went for corruption, no evidence. Uh, bribery, no evidence. Uh, then abuse of power, ob obstruction of justice. Nope, they, annoyingly they still haven't found any shred of evidence. And to make things much worse, President Trump released all the call transcripts of him and the Ukrainian president, showing that nothing actually happened. But then the Democrats won a majority in the House this year, so they decided to just go with it anyway, and now they've told the Senate that they have to have that trial at an unspecified time at some point in the next couple of months, just as soon as they can finally get something, anything to prove that he's guilty of something other than winning that darned election three years ago. It should be noted that much of this is being pushed by new congressmen who ran specifically on an election pledge this year to impeach the president regardless of evidence. And the whole thing makes about as much sense as inviting Peter Sutcliffe on as a question time guest. Labour's Brexit position made more sense in this impeachment proceeding, and yet we're not going to see it steamroll over everything for the next couple of months, with more legal back and forth than if you're tripped over a floor mat in a personal injury lawyer's office. Yes, yeah, Sam, let's see who's responsible for that accident now, why don't you? Beyond the fresh-faced new politicians, though, the older Democratic leadership to an extent has also forced this one through by a need for PR ahead of important fundraising ahead of next year's elections. But it was astonishing to see the actual debate where both sides stood up in turn with someone announcing all the crimes and they'd vote yes, and then the Republicans saying that they'd vote yes too, but there's no evidence for any of it, so they'll vote no. There's really just a will by the Democrats to get President Trump removed from office legally before he can be re-elected for four years. And I think that's the real point here, that only politicians get to vote in this thing. And so the only way that the Democrats can definitely prevent a second term is to keep the general public as far away from the whole decision-making process as humanly possible. Because why would you trust fools like that? You know, they've seen what happens in the UK. Anyway, see you next week, or possibly in the new year. If you like these, click subscribe.